this ability to scan read everything. Are they going to remember everything? No, not exactly, but they know the essence of it, the gist of it, to scan read. So this skill is very important. Even though you are not a lawyer, even though you are not a secretary. Okay, so you're going, you're going to see that with this course, not only that you learn plant physiology, but you learn the technique to learn to make that you grasp the concept as much as possible given your current capacity now. I do not know your current capacity. I pretty much, you, um, you know, actually I never used uh, lecturers when I was undergrad, lecturers uh, notes. I use this book, this kind of books. I just, I just read stuff, okay? So for example, um, we have this, So this complementary slide is actually to facilitate your um, understanding while you are reading the book. Okay? So let's get into it. Okay? Can you follow? Okay. I'm not worried because I know most students, they don't like to open dictionary. Not only the English regular English dictionary, the dictionary for this kind of you know, glossary of this thing. You are going to find so many problems if you do not have the desire to open dictionary. Okay? Because this English is super technical. Okay? All right. <clears throat> so, to begin with, so this chapter, it talks about um, the... The story about the genome, how scientists study plant genome, okay? There are many plants around. It's not possible to study every single species of the plant. It's just not possible, okay? It's just not possible. You know what? I'm going to put it this way so you know. Um, this complementary sl slide is going to be referring to which page of the book. Okay, so this is going to be difficult if the scientists were to study every single plant species. However, if you learn your botany already, I hope you have checked your botany. So you study plant taxonomy, right? So plants can be categorized according to their habits, according to their structure, and so on. So it happens that the classification of um, uh, a plant, Magnoliophyta, okay, I hope you have heard of that. Magnoliophyta means flowering plant, can be divided into two, namely monocotyledonous plant and dicot plant, meaning that plants inside the seeds has the single dicot or two dicots. You know what dicot is? It stands for dicotyledon, okay? Cotyledon. Cotyledon. So this is like a baby leaf inside the seeds, okay? Some seeds got one, some seeds got two. So the plants can be categorized into these two groups and since most of the plants that we are dealing with, not only in agriculture, but when you go to, you know, in the outdoor, you're going to be dealing with dicot plants many times. So that's why scientists pick one plant, which is this plant, Arabidopsis thaliana, to be a model organism to represent this dicot plant. It's just, that is just the reason. And of course, there are advantages of using this plant. 
we do not have this plant in tropical countries. Okay, this is um, it's a type of cress. I do not know what um, cress cress is in another language. So the full the, the common name is fail cress. Um, that there, there is a, a salad called water cress, something like that. Um, it's of no significant importance, this plant, to agriculture, to horticulture. No. Scientists pick it because it is small. The genome size is rather small as well. The chromosome number is low, which is only five. How many chromosomes you have? 20? 23. Okay. This plant only got five, so easy to deal with. Okay. And the genome size is only 125, um, meg not megabytes. You're not dealing with computer now. Megabases. Megabases. Just to give you a comparison, the banana, you know, the banana that you eat, is like three times this size. So it will take much longer to study the, the, the banana plant. Okay? All right. And amenable to transformation transformation meaning that amenable is it's very obedient whatever you do to the plants it will just obey you if they were about to use rice for this they're going to cry the scientist because rice is just resistant to so many things it's not easy to breed it's not easy to work with in, in the lab and so many other disadvantages okay and there's a spectrum of genetic and molecular resources meaning that um Be, the plants itself got variety as well in the nature. Some Arabidopsis, um, in certain ecotype, they have certain characteristic, while others have spe special characteristic. So you you uh, pretty much like the hibiscus. You know, some hibiscus are red, some are yellow. There are natural variations in the nature, and this is all still hibiscus, so which is good, okay, right? Because it is small even though the plant scientists have a very small lab they can still make discovery they don't need big lab like what we have now some of the scientists that i know they have a very small lab just under the stairs that's small but this can still make discovery because this plant doesn't require lots of spaces all right okay um so just to give a, f a bit of more uh, perspective. So Arabidopsis is about how many megabases just now? 100? 50? It's not even 10 seconds. 125. Okay. Look at that canopy plant. 150 billion. This is why scientists have to pick one model organism. If you're wondering why, why I need to pick a model organism, just use whatever plant that you have in your lab or within your home. Cannot do that. Okay. And this canopy plant, not only that it is largest in the plant kingdom, it is largest actually in the entire organism kingdom on this planet. Okay. This plant here. Um, Paris Japonica. Okay. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a flower. It's a, a, a pretty, pretty flower. You, you would, not, would not have guessed that the genome of this plant is so massive. It's even more than us. Look at human. How many? There's only 3.2 billion. Okay. So how come? How come? That plants have more than us. What is it doing? Can it can it run? Can it go to office? Can it go to, to, to university to get degree? So why? It has more genome than us, more DNA, uh, more more everything. How how come it's not functioning more than us? Yeah. That's the thing that you, you're trying to understand with gene structure. And the study of genome. More doesn't mean you can do a lot. More doesn't mean it's going to be a good thing. Less doesn't mean that you are inferior. 
No. Okay. The study of gene structure and genome do not use that kind of laws. All right. You would think that if you have more money, you're going to be happy. You're going to live longer. That in reality, that is in your life. Remember now, you are in molecular level now. Things are very different. Can, 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 can you see that DNA right now? Can you see? Do you have DNA? Yes. Where? It's, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's in your cells, right? There is one cell in your body that do not have... Um, I do not want to say DNA. It, it, it doesn't have nucleus. What is it? So you're not going to find DNA in this particular cell. But but probably you have this this cell, probably the most important. With, without it, you'll just go in like two seconds. There are so many blood cells. What? White blood cell, red blood cells, platelet, neutrophil, eosinophil. That erythrocytes, okay, erythrocyte. So the function is just to carry oxygen and um, CO2, right? Um, it's very important, but it hasn't got any nucleus in it, right? Okay, so that, that's just to give you a perspective, okay? All right, so um, this page also, oops, okay, this is to show how, how, how unhappy I am. Put it back. There is a word about a pseudogene there, okay? I'll try to address the terminologies as we go on, okay? So, this is why... Oh, you cannot see it. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I hope... I hope, It looks so clear in here. Uh, I should be uh, bringing uh, my own monitor so that I can turn it this way for you to see. Um, okay, not to worry. So, um, so it's pseudogene. So this is what I was talking about earlier. Many genome, big, bigger genome, more chromosomes, more genes, but some of the genes are actually pseudogenes. Pseudogenes means um, if this was the parent, the, the genes that is in the offspring, in the, in, the kids, in the kids, the next generation, they have some kind of duplication of or mutations. Okay, mutations means there is a change in the DNA sequence. If this was the original sequence, A, T, A, T, A, T, maybe sometimes it, it can change to, oops. Why? This is whiteboard. This is what, 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 why can I not have it? It's so hard. We need to give all the forces in the world. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. We use, we use other color. C. C with? G. So suddenly there is a mutation here. So it looks like original, but there is a slight differences here and there. Okay. So therefore, this guy here cannot function like the original genes, the DNA sequence. So it's called a pseudogene. It's it, it's there, but it's not doing anything. Okay. It's it's pretty it's pretty much like you are making a photocopy of this node. This note that you're having now, you're making many of it, but do you call it a book? But it's still a copy. You, you can see, still see the same thing, right? Yeah. So it's pretty much the same thing. You can see it. It's there. Physically, it's there. You can see the content is, is in there, but it's not the actual thing. Okay? All right. So, and the gene also, um, this is processed pseudogene. This is for the um, GMO. You know, sometimes people introduce foreign gene into the cell. That newly introduced gene can also undergo 
um, uh, mutation and also um, the duplication. All right. See, no parent. If no parent, where the genes come from? It has been introduced. Okay. Not only by the human, sometimes the, the virus can come in. The virus can come in and introduce it, and that gene can do many things on its own. All right. So why? <clears throat> You know, mitosis, meiosis, during the duplication of DNA, you see this thing happening so fast in the cells that to the point you are not even realizing it. Sometimes, when the cell trying to duplicate its DNA, errors occur. Errors occur, okay? It should transcribe this in this sequence but sometimes it it, it it just not not doing it correctly instead it becomes this Be, because it needs to do it supervised you try to do your 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 work like using both hands and then plus your mom scolding over you then you are hungry you are under stress you are on on, on deadline very stressful life so your your cells is pretty much that it's a wonder miracle you are being able to live up to this point, okay? The point is, even though the errors occur, the cell has a, what we call as DNA repair mechanism. There is a patrolling post protein floating about in the cell looking for these errors, and they will start to repair it, okay? However, sometimes the errors is just too much and the DNA repair mechanism cannot handle it with all. So, the, the newly duplicated cells with the new sets of DNA has some errors persistent in it. And when it duplicates to produce the new kids, this error will be passed along. And that's why you get mutation. Now, the whole organism is filled with errors. This is why we have aging. Aging is just <laughs> your, your DNA not able to repair on time. Okay? So the more you have inflammation in your body, not only look, you, but also plant, the more inflammation you have, the, the more you are doing the wrong things to your body, the more of these errors cannot be repaired and the more of the new cells that you are having which are actually non-functional. As simple as that. All right, okay. So let's move to the next page. Um, I know it's in your note, this is what you have, but actually I have updated that. So this is a better one. I found this in, 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 in nature um, um, this morning. Okay, so this page here, this two page here, what it tries to tell you is about the things like um, different levels of DNA packaging. Okay, so in your cells, in this picture here, you have genomes. Your genomes are actually in the form of what? Are they like a, like a blob there? They are in the form of what? You have your cells. Your genome is in where? In the nucleus. So your DNA in the form of what? Most of the time. They are actually in this form. They are not in this form that you usually see. No. This is actually ready to go mitosis. Most of the time, they are just in the form of this chromatin. Just like this. No pairing. So, when the cell is ready to divide, um, this thing will start to duplicate. Okay, all right. So let's look at this. So that is your DNA double helix. 
it's double, okay? Not like RNA. RNA only single stranded. This is double stranded. Okay. So this DNA a string, you can imagine it like a rope string. It will start to twist around a special protein called histone. That guy here, number three there. Sorry. Um, okay. So this protein, you can think it like um, um, you don't thread. You have this thing. If you have a sewing machine, what do you call this? And then this, there's a thread around here. What do you call it? Spindle. Is it spindle? Oh no, it's not spindle. Mm, it's not spindle. Bobbin. I don't know what 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 is it, Emily? So this thing, the, this thing here, oh, the thing that you have your threads to spin around it, that is the bobbin, and that's your thread. So this bobbin is actually the histone. And this thread here is your DNA. That is the analogy, the easy analogy. Okay, so when you have some of this come together and then suddenly you have like the H1 histone. This is actually equivalent to a few of this. So you have a few of this thing. So you want to join this, you put a pin. You put a pin, oh sorry. Actually it should be regular one. You put a pin so that this has its own pin, this has its own pin, this, it, it has its own pin. The pin for what? So this thing is not falling apart. You put a pin here. So this is equivalent to the H1 histone that you see on the diagram, okay? And this, bunch of bobbins and threads come together. Now in here, it is the nuclear sum. They come together and they will form a tubing like this. And this tubing is actually many, many of these nuclear sum units come together. Look at the sizing here. I'll just make it bigger here, okay? I hope you can see it. So one nuclear sum is about 11 nanometer. When they come together, now it becomes 30 nanometer. And there are many of them in one unit. And this will form a long loops and they will start to form, you know, like the old telephone cable kind of spinning around. Yeah, pretty much like that. And this whole thing, they are coiling, condensing upon each other. The terminology says it's super coiling. It's just to package the DNA as tightly as possible to the point you get this regular chromosome that you always see, okay? So the chromosome, when you see it this way, this is actually like this guy that you can pull, like your shirt here. Your shirt here. If you find one thread, if you pull it, what's going to happen? Yeah, you'll be giving a free show in no time, right? <laughs> you, 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 you are exposing uh, the, the, uh, your individual unit of the threat. Eventually, it's going to be long. I don't know how long is it. Maybe like what, three kilometers maybe? Super long. So it's pretty much that, okay? So why this is important? Because of this thing you need to understand about the chromosome part. So when you have the chromosome part, um, it talks about the chromatin, okay? Chromatin, remember, okay? Chromatin is just a bunch of nucleosomes that come together and then they're forming that thickness of 30 um, nanometer. So not all part of the chromosome this whole thing, we call it chromosome. The individual thing, like the noodles in there, that's the chromatin. Some of it are called heterochromatin, some of it are called euchromatin. What is that? 
So heterochromatine, they are actually even tighter compared to the euchromatine because they contain genes that are not actually going to be turned on so much. They're just at the tip. Okay. So this part here, this region here, this is usually the heterochromatin part. What happens if this is loose? Because this is the, the loose part. This is the euchromatin. U means true, meaning that this is the DNA sequence that actually have the gene function that the cell is going to transcribe very regularly. This part here, does it have the genes? Yes, but less use, or maybe not use at all. It's just a repetition of um, DNA and genes for no specific reason. They are just there, okay? Look at this book. Can you see the empty spaces here? Is that of any purpose while you are reading the book? Can the manufacturer remove that? But it gives the edges, okay? It gives the edges in case, in case if something happened, maybe you, you uh, there's a water spill nearby it, it doesn't get to the um, text immediately. And also you can hold the tip of the page without actually touching the text, okay? Because, it, you know, you got a dirty hand or something, the text might, 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 might go away, okay? All right. So this thing, you can stain it. Um, there is a special staining. It's called the hematoxylin and also eosin. This stain, when you put it onto your um, chromosome here, you're going to see that the heterochromatin is going to look darker because they are just tighter. Okay? All right. Look at the structure. For a set of chromosome like this, you have the top part here. This is called the short arm. This here, it's called the short arm. Short arm. And the label for this is P. It's for the French word petite. Short. For this arm here, I'm so sorry about all the scribble at the back. This is the Q, the Q arm. Um, <laughs> there is two opinions why this is um, named Q. The one opinion is because this is the letter after P. <laughs> and another reason is actually is the Q, Q U E U E. You know that the line, the line is long, right? So that's why it's Q. All right. Now we need to zoom in at this um, chromosome, the structure. What do you need to know? Number one, you need to know it's got two arms here. Okay. Remember, okay. Most of the time, it doesn't look like this. It's just like this, most of the time, all right? So in this form here, we call it this guy, this one, this one unit here, we call it as chromatid, chromatid. Inside the chromatids, the long string is the chromatin, okay? Inside the thread, if you remove the thread, it's the nucleosome. If you remove it again, you got the DNA helix, okay? So this is your chromatid. During the duplication, it will produce another set of it. Now it is called sister chromatid. This pair. okay? So for each of the um, chromosome looking like this, you will see that there is like a constricted part of it. it pretty much like, like the waist of, of a human, so this is this constricted part, which also happens to be the 
heterochromatin part, which is the part that is not expressing any gene very, very, very much, is called the centromere. Okay, centromere. In the centromere, you're going to find this thing. There is a protein attached to it. There is a constriction. When I say constriction, it means like this. This. It should be straight, but now kind of have a curve to it. So this part, this constriction here is the centromere. Now at this constriction, there is a protein attached to it. So this protein here, it's called the kinetochore. What this is for? During mitosis or meiosis division, the kinetochore is going to be attached to the microtubule. Remember, you learned about the cytoskeleton last week? It's going to be attached to the microtubule, and this is actually the thing that's going to pull apart this. It needs a latch. So with, 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 without, it's, it's pretty much like, like the hook. You know, you, you have your, you have a wall, then you have a hook, right? And then you have your ropes. Your rope need a hook so that it can hold to something. And this ho hook is equivalent to the kinotochore. And your rope now is the microtubule. Okay? All right. Yeah. So... Just a quick recap. This is one unit of, what do you call this? The whole thing. Chromatin or chromatid? Chromatid. Chromatid. Remember, this is one chromatid. The middle part is the centromere. It is constricted. Okay? And then you're going to have the dark blue here. What kind of chromatin region? Heterochromatin, and then we have U chromatin, and then right at the tip, yeah, one more part. This right at the tip here, it's called the telomere. This here, telomere. Look at your shoes. Look at your shoes, lace here. Your shoes, lace here, got this plastic cap, right? This plastic, that plastic cap, anybody know what is it called? <laughs> you, you, your shoelace, or oh, oh, you do not have shoelace. Your, um, your, your shoes are so expensive, I do not need shoelace. So your shoelace here, ah, I want to show, show this thing. This is your shoelace, which, this is your chrom, chroma, chromatid. This is your chromatid. At the tip of your shoelace is this plastic cap. Anybody know what is it plastic cap called? There is a word for that actually. Aglet. Aglet. This is actually the telomere. What will happen to this aglet plastic cap if it's not present here? What happened to this shoelace? Yeah. You, you, you're going to cause the entire chromatid to, to open and floating about. Yeah. Guess what? The genes should be silenced, will be turned on, and, and it's going to wreak havoc for the whole cell. So telomere is very important. So that there is a, t a telomere, this thing, also DNA sequence. There are many DNA sequence here, but it's actually for the spare. The empty space here. The buffer zone at the, at the bottom of your book so that errors are allowed to occur during the replication. As you get older, this telomere region gets shorter and shorter and shorter. And this is why aging happens and eventually you're going to see grandma very soon. 
because the more the more of this replicate undergo division cell mitosis the shorter of your telomere is going to be it will be sacrificed a small bit every time it divides so the more you divide the shorter it gets to the point is you no longer have a telomere and you just fall apart this will be the end of you okay so there is a uh, many scientists now they are um, studying various ways to um, re replenish, not replenish, to rejuvenate the telomere. So those who have a thick telomere, usually they look younger and they are healthier, even though they are 90 years old, 100 years old. Right? Okay. Do you want to know how to elongate tel telomeres? Yes. <laughs> As simple as number one, Re reduce or no sugar. Seriously, seriously, that, that thing is toxic. I'm not talking about the sugar naturally present in the fruit. No, that sugar comes along with vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, pigments, and so on. The sugar, I'm talking about the sugar in your Coke, the sugar in your beverages, coffee, whatever, that added sugar that sugar comes alone as a sin it hasn't got anybody coming along with it it's just a, that's why it's poison and the more you eat that added sugar not a natural sugar that come along with all the goodness in nature this thing become shorter quicker one of the reason all right okay oh yeah this thing I remember about, about, you know Mulan? Not Mulan number one, Mulan number two. Uh, there is a crazy prince from the, another kingdom like to play this thing in, in that cartoon, if you watch that. M the Disney Mulan, not the China version of Mulan. I watched the China version of it. There is, uh, the, there is no crazy prince. <laughs> you know this game? Uh, it's the... Um, uh, Chinese finger snap. I don't know why it calls Chinese, not, not to be racist or anything. Um, just to show you the action of kinotoco and mito, ma, microtubule. So this part here, the green part here, that is your kinotoco. Kinotoco, that is the hook on your wall. And microtubule is the rope that is going to pull. No, no, hook first and then pull. So what happens is the more it pulls, the more it will constrict like the Chinese snap toy. You see? It pull, it pull. This thing become smaller. Smaller, smaller to the point it will snap. That's pretty much the action of kinotoko and microtubule. All right? All right, okay. Okay, so in this book here, we are now at the... Let me see, the tandem repeat. The tandem repeat should be somewhere in here as well. So you're going to see that it's going to mention that um, in your cells, the DNA, there is a motif. Motif. Motif means patterns. Pattern. And we regularly call this as a repeat. Then we attach another word to it. So it can be tandem repeat, it can be um, any kind of uh, repeat. So this repeat here, for example, the one that we have here, it's called the tandem repeat. You can see that CAG happening so many times. So the DNA sequence in your chromatin kind of repeating this more and more and more. And this thing is the motif that I'm talking about here. And guess what? This motif will be very useful because this is species specific. Only you have this kind of motif. I'm not saying that this is the only motif. It can be any motif, okay? You know some, some fabric, it has got the repetitive motif like um, batik. Um, um, there, is, there is another... I'm trying to think something something more global. You know the 
if I think girls should know this, the paisley pattern. Oh, you do not know. Paisley pattern. The pattern that looks like this. Um, oh, no, no. It's, it's, that's, that's, that's just ugly. <laughs> um, snail? Kind of like a snail. Sometimes it looks like this. So it's called um, Paisley. Oh, this thing is connected to the internet. Let me open it. This thing. Do you see that? This is called Paisley. See, it repeats this this thing here. I'm, this is what I'm trying. I'm not an artist. No, I'm not. I'm a scientist. What do you expect? So this thing is very uh, popular. People turn it into motif. So this is what I'm telling. Um, even in nature, you have this repeat, and this repeat is very specific to the point you can ID a criminal. Remember, uh, I was talking about the gel electrophoresis. Last week, this is the result of a gel electrophoresis, okay? So you have a blood and you want to know this blood is from who because you know that this blood belongs to the suspect of a, mu a murder, all right? A crime investigation, for example. So you took the blood and then um, you process, extract the, the um, component of the blood out of it. Um, so you will get this pattern. So who's the criminal here? So this is found at the crime scene. And you've got three suspects here. Number two, why? Number one, can I? No. So this thing is actually um, the thing that you saw last week, DNA leathering. This is DNA leathering. See, it like leather. So these fragments here is actually, there, there should be uh, another leather here to tell you the size of this. So the fragments of DNA here, when it comes from the same organism, it will be very specific. You cannot lie about it, okay? Even even if with your brother, with your sister, unless you are identical twin. Even that, you know, twins can also change sometimes. Uh, you know, things that have a radiation, I do not know. One twin work at, at the nuclear uh, reactor. One twin work as a school teacher. Do you think the nuclear reactor twin is going to have the same DNA all along? Things, things can change. Okay? All right. Let's just look at that. All right, okay, so now we go to this, um, the figure here. This is from a maze, you know, Z maze, Z maze, this thing, oh, you cannot see it. All right, um, it's called cario, cariogram, this whole thing. Using the technique, actually, this, this is just to highlight a technique in studying gene expression. It's called fluorescence um, in situ hybridization. F I S H. Fish. F stands for fluorescence. I is in situ. I S. H is hybridization. So basically, you have a preparation of your um, chromosomes on, on a plate. And this chromosome, you make it hybridized with special kind of dyes. Not dye, dead, dyes, coloring. And this coloring will be bounded to specific regions within your chromosome. Remember your chromosome? have um, the eochromatin, 
heterochromatin, telomere. There is another region. Um, this N O R, nuclear organizer regions. N O R. Um, I, I I cannot rub it. Can I rub it? It's just not happening. I can, but I have to. <laughs> Life is so hard. Why? N O R nucleolar organization region. This thing is actually to produce specific um, RNA to make um, do you know ribosome? Ribosome? Do you know the function of ribosome? Ribosome is the protein factory in your cell. Okay, your ribosome, your ribosome has got two parts. One of the components in your ribosome is actually RNA. And since it belongs to ribosome, it's called rRNA. RNA, there are a few types, okay? RNA, ribonucleic acid. So far, you have learned about DNA, right? Uh, no, no, RNA. RNA got a few types. You got mRNA, you got tRNA, and also you got the rRNA. This is the messenger RNA, the one that is involved in making protein. The, you, and then you have the tRNA, the transport RNA. This is the RNA to um, to to um, elongate elongate um, amino acid sequence. rRNA is actually component of ribosome. This ribosome here. Oh, you see here? Why am I, am I repeating that? Repeating that there? Okay. So, um, this cardiogram will give a different color. Then you know some chromosomes have NOR while some others are not. Okay, that's the whole point. You will see that chromosomes, even though they belong to the specific um, organism, they have special function. That's why we have so many chromosomes. How many chromosomes do you have? 23. Is your chromosome responsible to determine your gender? All of it? There's only one. The XY chromosome. That's the only one. So, functions are specific. Sometimes it's only be responsible for only one or two chromosomes only. So that's the whole point. Okay. All right. So let's go there. Okay. Um, so this is about um, the, the events that happen in your gene. It's called transposon. Have you, have you taken a plant a crop breeding? Breeding, breeding class. Did you learn about this? Oh, it's a surprise. Are you sure you didn't learn about this? Tr uh, breeding. How could you finish a breeding course without knowing at all about transposon? Hmm. Ah, skip, skip. Um. Then it's, it's going to make it uh, difficult a bit, just a bit. Um, no, no, because um, when I was learn, learning my crop breeding, not, not, not only during, during my time, uh, in, in any breeding lessons, this is like one, one, one of the 10 top must know, okay? Because this is the knowledge by one of the famous Corn breeder that that won Nobel Prize, 
um, uh, what, what's, what's her name? Barbara McClintock. Um, um, she found that some genes, you know genes are pretty much in your DNA sequence, right? Some genes can actually jump. They belong to a sequence in one chromosome, but they're just not happy with the, with the location. They can jump from one place to another. Okay? And these jumping genes was caught by a scientist named Barbara McClintock. And this was first demonstrated in corn. I'll show you. Um, Barbara McClintock. So, yeah, this is her dead already. See? She worked with the corn. Um, jumping gene. Yep. I don't know how, how familiar you are with corn. You know, corn in our country pretty much one color. But if you go to, to other countries, corn are actually like gemstones. They're of various colors. Even on one cup of corn, suddenly there, 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 there is a yellow, white, purple, black, bluish. Suddenly, you don't know. Even within one kernel of corn, look at this. Even within one kernel, different colors are present. Okay, and guess what? Some, some of the cells within one kernel contains the pigment while others don't because some genes are present and some are not in the cell. They're all the maize cells, but the content of the genome slightly different. Slightly different. It's the same, it's the same genome. It's the same genome. It's just when the genes are jumping and about, sometimes that result in visual events. Even in your cells, sometimes the genes are working well, sometimes they are not. When nothing happened, you feel all right. But when the genes don't behave to the point your body cannot ignore it, that's why you get sick, you get old, you get disease and so on. It's pretty much like this. It happens so much to the point it becomes visual to our eyes, okay? So this put things into perspective. Just because physically you see the plants, you see the, any organism looks normal, doesn't mean that the cells are not doing anything of extraordinary. This is living things, okay? Maybe they have like 2,000 mutations already in one day, but you see nothing happen. But actually the mutation is already occurring. Okay, it's just it's not um, have the any visual um, uh, impact uh, so now. Okay, so when you talk about chromosome, just like this. So transposon, it's uh, for transposable elements. Just as that. Two types of transposon. Transposon, um, the f there is a first type is called retrotransposon. It's on this book, okay? Retrotransposon. Retrotransposon, the layman word for it is copy and paste. Meaning that you have um, a DNA sequence, a gene on a chromosome, and then this gene is transcribed by mRNA. So you have your RNA here, mRNA, and then this mRNA, usually from mRNA, you go straight to make what? Protein. But in this case, this mRNA transcript, it's floating about, and then it, it itself gets transcribed by an enzyme called reverse transcriptase. Okay? So this reverse transcription causing um, a new copy of the gene to be produced outside the DNA sequence in the original place. And then this newly transcribed gene can be put in the 
new location. See, there is an insertion there. Original location, Xerox machine in the middle. You got your Xerox paper and then Xerox paper sent to a new location. That is why it is called copy and paste. Okay, think of a Xerox machine here. A second transposon is just a regular DNA transposon. Um, cut and paste. You have a sequence of DNA, no transcription taking place. It's just there is an enzyme come along, cut it out, literally cut it out. This is a physical event. Cut it out and then insert it somewhere else. You cut it, you got the, the, the physical piece of it, and you place it somewhere. And this is called the DNA transposon. Only two types. Okay. This technology, people use it now in the gene editing. If you if you heard about CRISPR and so on, yes. People use this um, to manipulate the genome so that the plant or the crop is doing something that you desire. Okay. So when you have this technique and then you can do it in the lab, can you imagine how much the plant that you can control? You can, you can make the plant grow bigger. You can make the plant, instead of flowering red, now it's flowering blue. You can control anything with this technique. Okay? Of course, there are some ethical issues attached to it, but, well, humans are greedy, right? Yeah. You are nice now because you don't have money. Try you are a hundred times richer than now. You wouldn't be here, right? So that's why we need legislation, right? Okay. That is all that you need to know about the transposer up to this point, okay? This is why I keep telling you um, repetition is the key. You, at this point, since you have under, undergone the plant breeding course, you should have seen this before because this is the basic of it, all right? Not to worry, not to worry. Life is not perfect. All right, okay. So, and then we move on to... Yeah. Um, what is this thing? Oh, methylation. Okay. Just now, you see that transposon, the jumping genes, can cause physical changes or visual uh, changes to your plants, right? That is due to the action of the gene itself. Gene get uh, transported somewhere. Genes that cannot be expressed. Gene that can be expressed. If the gene is uh, highly expressing, it's in the EU chromatin region. So these are all still involving the gene itself. But guess what? There, there is another control of the gene expression in the cell. Nothing to do with the DNA sequence and all. DNA sequence in the genome stays the same. Not changing, but the organism can still do a lot of changes. For The best example is the um, identical twin. You got identical twin that be born to a family, okay. One, one, one stay in poor under the British home family, one sent to the palace to live with the wealthiest king of all time. And then bring them again after 20 years. What do you think is going to happen to the to the under the bridge twin and also the palace twin. After 20 years, when they are 20 years of age now, are they going to look identically similar like they, the time they were born? Remember, they have the same genome, like superly identical. Copy, paste. Are they going to be the same? Why not? They have the same genome, same genome, same uh, same numbers, everything the same. Why why they not they not uh, the same now? Yes, hence the word epigenetic. Oh God, this thing. Epigenetic. Two word here. Genetic is your genome. Can you control your genome? It's pretty much what you have. But epi, epi means something at the edge. 
something at the edge, at the side of it. This thing, I cannot control, but can I control whatever outside of it? Yes. So, it's pretty much like the genes. The genes cannot be changed, the DNA sequence cannot be changed, but the, the things attaching to the DNA sequence can change. And one of the things that can change DNA gene expression is methylation, methyl group. Methyl. Um, CH3. Methyl. Okay. So, um, this methyl group, CH3, it can bind. Methyl is present ev everywhere, okay? It's, it's in your body, it's everywhere. The CH3. It can bind to one of the nucleotide in the sequence. This guy here. C. C is what? Cytosine. So, methyl can bind to the um, cytosine, and when this happens, the th transcription, the transcribing of the sequence cannot happen very well. It, it's kind of getting in the way. Can you see here? It's getting in the way, right? Not only methyl, some other protein, um, maybe you cannot see here, it says here, um, this protein here is MBP. It's, it's um, uh, another protein that can attach on top of the methyl. So this red thing here is the methyl. And then this protein can come along to make it even busier. Like one problem is not enough. Now the second problem come along. So when this happens, that this is why if you go back to your euchromatin, heterochromatin, this is why some, some cells, no, no, some genes are not expressed. They just stay there. And this is important. Otherwise, this thing cannot happen. Cell differentiation, meaning that in our body, we all start as one type of cell. You know, the zygote, the embryo, the zygote. These cells will become more and more over time. So this mass of cell, some of it becoming your bone cell, some of it becoming your hair cell, your heart cell, your nerve cell. These events of deciding what cells doing what is called the cell differentiation. And it can only be achieved when one genome, the cell know what to turn on, what to turn off. Not everything turn on at the same time. If that is the case, you're not going to get anything. You, 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 you basically just get a blob of cells, undifferentiated mass. All right? So cell differentiation can only be achieved when the cell can control the genome expression and this is achieved by having these metal things around okay this is why you can um, measure you know some um i don't know if you if you read or not uh biological clock you know you can go to the clinic or lab and then determine how old are you actually biologically not chronological age maybe now you are up feel 40 years old that's your chronological age we're talking about the biological age, okay? This biological age done by the testing lab is actually measuring methylation percentage in your cell. So the more methyl you have, yeah, yeah. Um, if you want to look further on this, it's called um, Harvath clock. Yep. So this, this is uh, the thing that they do use to measure the, um, your biological clock in, in your body. How vast clock? It's a name of a guy. Uh, he, his, uh, he studied uh, uh, um, aging, uh, cells aging um, in, in uh, Harvard. All right? Okay. So you can see that uh, loss of methylation, you have that 
<clears throat> you see that small cell? This thing here? This is actually this plant. This plant, this arabidopsis, this is arabidopsis, by the way. This arabidopsis is very healthy. Genes that should be turned on are turned on. That should be off are off. But this guy here, since they do not have methylation, all are turned on. You see what happens when all are turned on? It doesn't look like a plant. It's look, that's, that's like what? Huh. You see? Clam. Is it called, you know, clam? It's, it's, it's the, the, the thing in the ocean. Uh, seafood, seafood, sea, not sea harm. Uh, what clam? Uh, sea harm lah. Oh, sea harm lah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, you see? That's the sea harm. Yeah. Okay. This clam, this clam, when you treat it for a bit, just a bit, you treat it so that the methylation can occur at the right place, you see? some of the structure get reverted. It becomes healthier again. All right? This is what they are trying to do with the human now. You are aging. Your methylation is, it has gone haywire. They're doing, they're trying to do the right way so that you have the right methylation in your body. Okay? Do you want to know how to reduce methylation in your body? <laughs> Actually, you can. Um, um, sulfur. 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 Um, not, not, not the sulfur that you bring during campsite and to prevent snake from getting into your tent. Um, this, this is why people in the village, they, they are healthier, you know? The, the, the village people, they go out, they don't wear any shoes, and then the bare foot, bare hand, bare skin, touching with the dew, you know, the droplets of water on, 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 on the plants in the morning. And this dew actually high in sulfur. And this sulfur touch to the skin and then gets absorbed into your, 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 your body. And that actually makes your methylation become healthier. Yeah, yeah. So, no, no wonder um, the village people, um, they're not necessarily rich. But um, they can be healthier than the urban people. All right. Okay. <sighs> Are you still breathing? Are you still breathing? Are you still breathing? We are here, okay? <laughs> okay, this is just to show you how the chromosome look like. Um, there is a... You see chromosome... Chromosome, I mean the, the, the cro chromatids, sorry, chromatids, um, they can have configuration or pattern depending on the genome size. If, um, if the plant, the genome is large, usually they have the, the A formation, the rebel, the rebel configuration. The blue thing is your nucleus, and then your cent the centromere of your chromosome, kind of the opposite of the telomere. Okay, it's it's been um, assembled um, that way. Okay, if your plant genome is smaller. It's going to have the rosette-like organization, like in here, like in Arabidopsis. Arabidopsis is small, right? You learned just now. So the A should look like for the biggest genome. What, what is the organism that have the biggest genome that you saw in the second, third slide? Paris, Japonica. Paris, Japonica will have A or B? A, because it's big. So B is for this um, simple, uh, smaller genome. So this thing we call the uh, the rosette formation, okay? So you have the nucleolus in your uh, uh, nucleus. It's kind of attached itself surrounding it, okay? So, of course, the space is very tight. That's why the chromatin turns into this loop. It's, it's kind of like a butterfly surround in, in your nucleus, okay? And then there's a third part, uh, form. This is called the bouquet. So this is some, kind of like some... Uh, plants, not too big, not too small. Uh, yeah, you can have this 
kind of chromosome arrangement. Okay. Who decide this? This is very species specific. Okay. This is very spe species specific. How the chromosome, can you control how your chromosome arrange in you? Which, which, which do you think your chromosome arrange like? A, B or C? In you? Can it be? Look at the third slide. See who 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 is uh, equivalent to human. I think it should be um, either A or C. Cannot be B. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. This is just to uh, to quick 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 recap. Quick recap. Um, in order for you to understand this, this page here, this talks about meiosis. Okay. All right. Ah. <coughs> Right, because in meiosis, you're going to um, come along with these terminologies, homologous, homolog chromos homologous chromosome. <sighs> okay, why two? One from mom, one from dad. Just as that. That's why it's called homologous. The sequence in each chromosome, they can be different but they pairing nicely because your mom genome of course going to be different from your dad's genome but the fundamental is the same that's why they can do the pairing all right yeah you got the paternal copy and also the maternal copy all right <clears throat> okay and most of the time the shape of your What's this? A unit of this? What do you call it? Chromatid. Okay, for most of the time. During cell defecation, very, very short time, during the entire whole long time, it will become this way. So most of the time, it looks this way, the chromatid in your cell. Most of the time, it looks... Uh, no, for the specific time, it will start to look the chromosome that you are familiar with. Ooh, this thing. Can you just read this? <laughs> This is not mitosis, okay? No, the reason I skip mitosis is because mitosis is kind of straightforward. Yeah. Meiosis. Uh, one moment. You know, I learned, I learned this when, when, when I first entered UPM. Um, so the knowledge is actually very, very long time ago. Um, whatever that I'm telling you now today, is actually the knowledge of 19 years old boy reading a Campbell book 6th edition and repeating back now to you. Can you imagine if you have met me when I was 19, you'll be very, very intimidated. <laughs> because I told you I didn't use lecture slide. Okay, I'll just enjoy what the lecturer is giving, but I'll still, I'll still use the book. I'll just, I'll just read the books. Um, partly because my age was so stupid that I just need to know more words. But in the process, you can know all the signs as well. All right. The essence of this. Let's finish this um, in, 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 in um, uh, a few minutes' time. The idea is meiosis has two parts. Meiosis 1, meiosis 2. Meiosis 1 is the event where you have your... Um, chromosome homologs from both mom and dad be next to each other, okay? They become close to each other. Moms, red, blue, dad, okay? And then when they are chromosome, mom's chromosome, dad's chromosome in meiosis, they kind of brought together, okay? When they brought together, what are they going to do? Arguing like your mom and dad at home? They will start to share information. Crossing over. Pump. It's not appropriate, by the way, I remember it. They, 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 they start to making out. Yeah. So, they kiss with each other, and then they will take some part of each other away. Okay? Crossing over. Uh, this part here crossing over here so now 
the part that got the hickey it's called the um chiasma 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 is it here yes i hope you know what hickey is or you you are too clean you don't know anything oh god i was You see, after they're done making out, your mom's lipstick will stuck to your dad's collar. So, yeah, that is chiasma, the, the side of it. Get it? All right? Yeah, when that happened, now, after they, after they have had their morning case, then only your mom can go back to kitchen, your dads can go to office to do the work. Then they can separate, otherwise they cannot. It's just you uh, please um uh, uh, morning ritual <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> otherwise i cannot go to work right right okay now they they don't mm -mm. okay now, okay okay you go back to kitchen i go to office okay fine okay that's the end of meiosis one okay in meiosis two uh this is the the time they they, they start to making a lot of money that's make a lot of money must make lots of cooks and dishes at the kitchen okay so Meiosis 2 is the uh, regular mitosis here, okay? So, the, the one with the crossing over now, they kind of separated to form these four daughter nucleus. Because now, each of these pair of the chromatid go into one cell. Originally, you have two, right? Like this. This is what you have originally. Now it becomes like this. Not only that, crossing over has also occurred. Okay? That's all you know, need to know up to this point. Meiosis got two parts. And maybe if the most I will ask you about what is dikinesis. Can you see that dikinesis thing? <laughs> this, is, this, this, this is the stages... Okay, for um, mitosis, you have the stages, right? Prophase. What is this? Metaphase. Okay, for the meiosis one, it's got stages as well. So, um, um, let me see whether I remember this or not. Uh, it's, it's been like 20 years. Um, 13. Uh, in. 13. Is it right? Or is it wrong? You cannot see it. Uh? Oh, I, can, I can see here actually. Leptotin, zygotin, pakitin. No, pakitin. I missed one thing. Um, pakitin. Teplotin, pakinesis. Is it right? Yay. Yay. You see? Stop eating sugar. All right. So, just know the difference and what's happened. So, within this, this, this is the, um, if you can see the, um, the plot in here, this is the stage. This is the stage, mom and dad making out. Okay, this is the stage, they go to work. Okay. Leptotin, they just woke up from the sleep and then go to shower and so on. All right? Okay. Just that. Just that. Please read this on its own because this is just a revision. All right? Okay. All right. Okay. And 
What's more? Okay, polyploidy. We'll, we'll, we'll finish it in 10, 15 minutes. Okay. So why is this myth mitosis meiosis uh, important? Because this is used to understand a, a phenomenon which is very important in, in horticulture, agriculture. It's called polyploidy. Ploidy, polyploidy means the copy of genome, the actions of the cells making extra copies of the genome. Poly means many. Ploid, ploidy, referring to the genome. All right? So you can see that um, some, actually, plants, they are not like human. We are only 2N. Why 2N? Mom and dad, that's why you got two. Is there anywhere in your body that's only N? No. In the gamete cells, in the, in the egg ovum cell, and also in the sperm. That's where you get N. The rest of the body, you see, um, cells, when we're talking about the N or 2N, Oh my God. Oh. Life is so hard. When you're talking about N or 2N, that is a concept here you need to understand. This here is referring to special cells called somatic cells. Soma means body. Bodily cells, the most of you, the rest of you, the most of you, are called somatic cells. The N is 2N, moms and dad. However, in your reproductive structure, you have cells called the gamete cells. And this gamete cell only got N. Half of it. This happens, mitosis. This happened, meiosis. Okay, let's be clear about that. Okay, so during the cell division, no, no, um, DNA um, replication, the regular way to do it is DNA replicate and then it will split half into new cell, half into another cell. However, some plants, they just replicate the chromatids, but they don't divide. That's why they have the N suddenly until 10, maybe sometime more than 10, okay? So when this happened in agriculture, you can see that the wild type strawberry is 2N. But when the, you know, breeding program, high, uh, um, assisted hybridization and so on, you get strawberry with 8N. 8N ploidy, we call it octaploid. 2N diploid, 3N tetraploid, 5 pentaploid, 6 hexaploid, 7 heptaploid, 10 decaploid. decaploid. And this is octaploid. It becomes bigger. So the, the advantage is there. But also there are some uh, disadvantages because this plant usually they are sterile. You have so many genes to deal with. Of course, of course, uh, the cells going to get confused, not to mention the errors going to, ha to happen. All right. So ploidy uh, is, is important, but it comes with warning labels. Okay. What happens? If you have ploidy, I, I want big. I would want to become bigger and 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 smarter and and, and so on. So you want to increase your two n to become four n. You want to become a tetraploid now. Can can it be helpful to have a human? Why? If it becomes to human, uh, not only is it try, you die. You'll 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 just die. Because uh, because um, the repair mechanism for human is not that great, and our telomere is not that long. Long, okay. There's not much room for errors to occur in our cell compared to plants, All right? All right. 
Okay, so, um, oh, this thing. <laughs> uh, can I just say, can you read this? <laughs> then I'll just give you the question. Um, oh, can I see? I'm so sorry about this. Um, the essence of this is, in order to achieve, we, we only take one example here, the formation of tetraploid. There are many pathways from the original parent and then the final offspring to get tetraploid. Sometimes um, the duplication can happen within the cell itself. Within the cell, meaning that the cells originally 2N and suddenly it divides, the chromatid divides, uh, no, no, sorry, not divide, duplicates, the chromatid duplicates, but the cell doesn't divide. So from 2N, it becomes 4N. So when it, it is done by the cell itself, it's called autoploid, autopolyploid, this guy here. Auto, meaning that it is within the same species, within the same genome. However, when it involves cross-hybridization, meaning that you have a banana from Mexico, then you want to cross with banana from the Philippines. This thing cross together, and then because of this crossing, the resulting offspring, you have extra ploidy. This is called allo polyploid. Allo means different. It's from different species. Okay? And of course, in between of my story, there are many details how that can further happening involving the gamete cells and also the somatic cells. To understand this um, picture, you need to understand there is, there is a different color use in this diagram. Some colors are referring to the somatic cells, some are referring to the gamete cells. For example, this line here, the second line cells here, is referring to the gamete cells. Okay, and the background of the chromosome, it can be of orange color or green color for this gamete. So for the green color, this gamete here, the division has occurred. That's why you only get one copy. But for the gamete that does only replicates but does not divide, the background is orange. Okay, so this is what we call as UR here, unreduced gamete. Gamete should reduce, okay? 2N reduced by half become N, but in this case, it doesn't reduce. When it doesn't reduce, the unreduced gamete meet with another unreduced gamete. That's why you have ploid or polyploid. 2N, 2N. So it's very, uh, um, um, it's, it's, there are many ways. How many ways there are here? Um, I, I think up to H. So many here. Okay, all right. Maybe we can do a little tutorial. I'll give you a question and then you see how you answer the, the question. Then, no, um, it's going to take a while to, to understand it, but that's the basic. The, the thing that I just said to you just now is the thing I said to my friends long time ago before to understand this kind of diagram. People tend to miss look at all this color, but actually this color actually telling you something. Or anybody of you cannot see the color. <laughs> understand the color and then understand the concept of gamete cell and also the somatic cells. Okay? All right. So, and um, so polyploidy actually is very, very actively happening in agriculture. The best example is this thing the U phase diagram. Um, utilizing the choice sum family, Brassica. So um, we have three species of Brassica in nature. Brassica nigra, Brassica oleracea, Brassica rapa. And each of these Brassica in nature, wild type, they can somehow cross with each other. 
and in between they producing a new kind of brassica okay it happens to all sides of the triangle okay and this is the um original chromosome number i think that the, the upper chromosome um, upper triangle looks much better chromosome from one genome chromosome from another genome if it's um, wild type, completely pure, it's only one color, like the brassica nigra, all red. And then brassica aurasia, all blue. Rapa, all green. But when they cross with each other, they will start to have this new genome introduced to it. This is the polyploidy thing. Okay, this is another way how different species, this and here, cross hybridize to give rise to Autoploidy or alloloploidy? Hello. Hello or auto? Hello. So this is hello. This is one example of allopolyploidy. All right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And the most of I'll, I'll, I'll ask you, why is it called the U face? That's the reason, actually. I think the name of the guy is a Korean or something. You, you know how... Uh, is, it, is it... Oh, yeah. So, uh, Korean. Scientist Nagaharu something. All right, okay. All right. Ooh. Okay, let's let's start up to this point. Um just okay, finally. So when you have ploidy level in plant, it seems like the more ploid level that you have for plants, not for you, for plant, the bigger and more vigorous it's going to look like. Remember the strawberry just now? What if you make the strawberry 10n? Or 12N. <laughs> so actually, um, there is a condition to it. The polyploidy, it will become useful, beneficial with the increment of ploidy level if it's the content of the genome is heterozygous. If it's a lot of homozygous in breeding, not much goodness can come. For example, the, it has been proven with the corn. Corn is inbreeding within the same ground uh, and it's important in agriculture because you need to make everything consistent. So, corn that has only one end, it's pretty much, does it look happy? No. So then you have the corn from two end. Apparently, okay, it looks big. But what happens when you increase the end? Look. Because what? Because corn is inbreeding. There is no... Even though the, the number of chromatids uh, pairing increase, but there is no diversity. It's the same thing. Okay. You, are, you, you have a team of five. All IQ uh, 150, for example. Will it make any difference if suddenly 150 come along? Will the, the team become smarter? You add more, you add another three persons to the team. Also have the IQ of 150. Your team is already smart. And then you add another three smart person, IQ of 150. Will your team become more productive or become more smarter? It's, it's pretty much that. But if suddenly you add Einstein, IQ 200 in there, what happened to your team? Then it will become, oh, we, 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 be, we see something now. We become more creative now. This guy that just come to our, our team, make, making our thing polyploid, actually contributing something. This is the story here. All right. So diploid, increase in ploidy. Homozygosity, like the corn here, the vigor will come down. If you have heterozygote, like the crossing of two species, this is pretty much the allo polyploid. This is the case of allo polyploid. Then your vigor will start to increase with the increase of the ploidy levels. All right? Okay. Yeah. Oh, this is just to, to show you um, a ploidy in terms of evolu evolution. Just now, I told you um, in terms of agriculture, the crossing, right? crossing of one plant with another and so on. Now, in terms of the evolution, 
this is happening as well long time long time scale yeah and something something can happen and this is actually the point that you can get from here is the formation of species this house this is how species is formed okay yeah so it start with a diploid on the top and then on the way to become a polyploidy sometimes things can revert back like it was originally this is the current generation that's maybe like 10,000 years ago diploid ancestor eventually it can become like the ancestor back it can revert back all right because your cells is dynamic actively changing all right or maybe it doesn't it just becomes like this things can happen if suddenly we are not happy with our banana in the current time we want banana from the ten thousand years ago we know what to do just follow the ancestor ploidy level and there are many chemicals that we can do to the banana so that it can become like the ancestor grandma's better let's follow her something like that okay you see you see just just deep in in the um um, in the solution, the the chemical is it's called colchicine. Colchicine. If you have your very old and friable akong with gout, this is the medication that he's taking from 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 the hospital. This is the medicine used to treat gout. You know gout? Yeah. The same medicine, cortisine, is actually can use to prevent the cells from dividing. They are allowed to replicate the DNA, the chromatids, replicates but not dividing. So that's why ploidy can happen. Dip it, dip it in this cortisine solution. From four become eight, something like that. Okay. All right. Okay. Da, da, da. All right. Okay. I think that's all for now. Let's let's. Calm down, calm down. Okay. All right. Okay. Do you have class of today's? Yes. Oh, all right. Is it here? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. That's all for 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 now for for this week. Okay. Are you alright? Yeah. Are you alright? <laughs> Are you alright? Right? <gasps> yeah. Yeah. So, right now in the industry, there's a lot of. Um, for example, this coaching using uh, the energy, this onion. Mm -mm. Are we using this technique right now in the yeah, 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 in so, in in the breeding program? Yes. So it's considered GMO. Um, it's well, well, it depends on who you're talking to. Um, yeah, this thing can revert back. So many people don't consider it as GMO necessarily because you can undo the gmo that people have to problem with is the gmo using the bacteria to introduce foreign genetic materials or using the crispr or particle gun or the uh, nuclear radiation that you cannot undo there is no control z to it so that's very hardcore fixed usually people regard that as gmo but for the cortisine um ploidy level you, you you can actually play around with it pretty much yeah yeah but sometimes it doesn't work you have increased the number of the uh, ploid ploidy but it is not behaving the way you are hoping to because you are not amplifying any specific genes you are creating a lot of duplications that might be homozygote you remember, for it to become vigor, extra superpower, it has to be heterozygote. Remember the corn just now. All right, okay? Yeah. All right. Are you okay? Not okay? Not okay? Yeah. So, Doctor, uh, isn't like when so, isn't it during the cross the species similar to the CRISPR with introduced foreign gene? CRISPR is not introducing gene, it's editing gene. You know the sequence that you are targeting, 
you do something to the sequence to silence it or to move it somewhere else. But no foreign gen genetic materials is being introduced to the cells. That's why CRISPR is different than the regular GMO. You see in CRISPR, there is no foreign genetic material. It's still the same genome. You are just playing around with the current content. Yeah. For example, oh, I don't want this. I'll tear off this, this page. So that, oh, I only have two, two chapters to read now. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then they come along your brother at night, get another pages from other book, staple it, and bind. There you go, your new book. People got problem with that. That's why you beat your brother. I got problem with that. All right, okay. So gene editing and gene transformation is not the same, okay? Gene transformation is the regular GMO. You transform it. Gene editing, whatever in the current genome, you are shutting up or, you know, making it express later, something like that. No foreign genetic material whatsoever. Okay, good, good, good. All right, okay. Are you okay over there? No, okay. Breathe, breathe, breathe. <sighs> Relax. You know, I'm, I'm storing to you. I'm, see, I'm, I'm not reading it. I'm just telling you like some 20 years ago story. Maybe it says some a bit, a bit more. Yeah, all right. Okay, I think that's all. So um, I'll see you on when? When I see you? All right, okay. We'll talk more about your experiment then, okay? All right. Okay. Thank you. All right.